talking about the 10 step Pablo Botari model. Uh, we have gone through five steps, five more to go. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we said that till step five, hopefully the person's will um, is very much for deliverance, then we can proceed. Okay, so now we assume that the person is willing. Now what to do? Now we basically want to go to the root of the issue. Okay, so root of the issue is what are the open doors or the entry points or why did this happen? You remember I uh, gave one example when I, uh, you know, went to a conference with uh, some of the youth from church and then we were praying over a certain lady and we just couldn't evict the demon spirit and then, you know, Pastor came and he was asking some questions and then, you know, uh, when he asked, have you dedicated this child to uh, any god or goddess? That's when the mother said, okay, I dedicated her to something like, you know, goddess of beauty. That was the key, or that was, if you want to call it, the open door or uh, the entry point. Like, why, how did this demon come in? That's the question. And uh, conversation with, with, the, with the demon, we said, in general, there's no point engaging in a conversation. But sometimes, you know, when we ask the question, um, who are you? When did you come into this person? But some Times when you ask some questions, uh, you get an idea. You get an idea of, oh, oh, okay, that's how. So the right way, you know, of uh, dealing with any issue uh, is to go to the root of that issue because you you can, as I told us earlier, you know, you can remove the mud from the pipe, but if you don't fix the holes, this is going to repeat. And so, what is the root? Oh. All those holes that have happened. So come on, let's fix it. Now, why why are there holes? We could just you know go to the best solution. Ah, the pipe quality was not good enough. How about we just replace it with a better quality pipe? Then no holes, no mud, no blockage. We can just go go uh, you know through uh, things in a smooth way. So in the same way, whenever we are ministering deliverance go to solve it at its root so then begin to ask the question um now if the person remembers they might say yeah you know one of my friends had taken me to this uh, some religious ceremony uh, and uh, you know these things happened uh, there uh, there was some sort of a worship going on i participated in it so maybe the demons entered at that time. So then you recognize then you can actually play with them to um, cancel the commitment which they made at that point. Uh, then it might be such that while talking to the person, they share um, that, oh, I've been through traumatic experiences in my um, relationship. Uh, relationships i had a traumatic experience growing up you know my parents were like this and this is what they said this is what they did so also we can sometimes figure out maybe they are carrying um, unhealed wounds in their hearts maybe they are carrying unforgiveness bitterness anger towards you know their their parents or it could be you know, in, in any other relationship so uh, all this shows then we know, right? Like, uh, hey, forgiveness opens the door, bitterness opens the door. So then we can try to address that matter and show them, yes, you know, what happened to you was definitely not correct. Um, you know, I feel with you, I agree with you, I understand. But, you know, this is what the Bible says. You know, we, we must forgive, uh, forgive uh, this person who has. Uh, dealt with you in this manner. Mm, you see, Jesus forgave you, and the Bible says that God forgave us, that we too must forgive. So, again, this might not be a matter of one conversation. We may have to deal with this issue. Deliverance, yeah, let it be there. Uh, I might have to meet with this person a few times, and then the matter is unforgiveness, bitterness. So, then, you know, till that is resolved, 
uh, it, it's difficult because then again, you know, you once a person is free, then issues restart. So uh, talking to the individual, or we call it the interview, interview. So you look in, you have an internal view of why this uh, took place. What are the the sources uh, of um, entry into this person's life? So once we figure it out, hey, because of these open doors, uh, this person is, you know, the demons have entered. Mm, uh, then we are in a position to shut those doors. So be thorough. There's no rush. We are not in a rush here. Um, try to get as much uh, info as possible. Again, um, I, I don't know if we mentioned this, in, if I mentioned it in the course, sometimes when it comes to breaking generational bondages, there is no need to go into all the details because some uh, ministries prescribe that. They say, uh, they also have a chart. I have also done it. Uh, you know, the entire chart from the time you were born, uh, you know, your, your relationship with your parents, uh, did you, uh, uh, like in your youth, did you, did you um, uh, play around with, you know, the occult by certain, certain practices, you know, tarot cards, this, that. They'll give you a full list. Then you have to sit and pick and say, oh, yeah, this happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. Like basically full, uh, my full history. Who's your father? Who's your grandfather? But I don't think so much detail is what we are talking about, not required. You know, just sufficient information to deal with this matter. It's enough. Okay, no need to go into the history of the person. What are the open doors that have led to the demonization of this person. Let's deal with that. That's the only point. So when we say interview, interview shouldn't become a long interview also. Okay? So keep all this in mind. So once we have an idea, uh, then what happens is we get the, um, you know, maybe we are able to even list out the spirits. We can say, okay, I understood now. So because of this, this, there is a spirit of lust. Because of mm, that traumatic experience, there is a spirit of bitterness. Mm, so we can even list out, why do I need to know what spirits are there? Because then I can address. I can uh, address them by name. I can ask them to leave. Right? So I understand what exactly is going on. So that's the reason you kind of find out. Okay. One more thing during the interview is... Um, you see the manifestation of these demons. Obviously, the person is demonized. So, uh, the demons are there. But as we are going through this process, you know, they might uh, manifest, um, try to disturb. Uh, and also, when we are speaking to the person, uh, you know, we might have a tendency to like fight with the demon spirit or, you know, kind of provoke the demon spirit or something to stir up the demon spirit. But throughout step one, uh, uh, six, try to try to keep the demon spirit under subjection. Uh, because, you know, it means the quieter things are, the faster things are, the better. So that's our intention. So don't stir up, provoke, they taunt, you taunt back. All that is not required. Too many questions, you know, not at all required. Keep the demon spirits quiet. Okay. Uh, and then, hmm, now that I've understood what are the root causes, maybe I want to take authority. And uh, uh, if there is a stronghold, I break the stronghold. If there is a curse, I break the curse. Uh, I, I also work with the person. So then I tell them, look, this seems to be the issue. Will you pray with me? Will you uh, will you pray for forgiveness uh, on this matter? Then when the person says, Dear Lord Jesus, uh, please forgive me, that's when the door shuts. Right? So we can bring them to a place where the doors are finally shut. Okay? And then you move forward. It will be, our ministry will be effective. Yeah. Uh, any questions, any point in time, please just stop me.
Okay, at, at this point, anything that you all want to say? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just continue. I'll just continue. Yes. Now, point seven. Leave the person in closing these doors to the admission of the spirits. Okay, so uh, I've already kind of shared that in my enthusiasm. So that is step seven. Uh, so where, you know, you tell them, forgive somebody if they hurt you. Uh, if there are sins, right? If there are sins that we have committed or the person has committed, then pray for the father to forgive you. And it is good to be specific. So um, you could uh, lead them to pinpoint um I, dear Heavenly Father, I am sorry that I partook of the worship of that, uh, something. Or I am sorry that, you know, I dishonored my marriage and I uh, was in an adulterous relationship with. Be very specific. It is required because we are going against that open door. So then when God's forgiveness for that matter comes, uh, you know, there is a release. There, there is a release of his power or you know i mm, practiced uh, of you know things of the occult i read horoscopes i um, so basically what is that one specific thing that has opened the door for this devil they have to say it they have to repent of it then renounce you know renounce renunciation is uh, telling the demon spirit see renunciation is always done loudly you can't say it in your heart. You can't say, oh, okay, um, you know, I, I I repent of the sin. The sin no longer has dominion over me. I belong to Jesus. In my heart, I said it. Now, that is helpful for God. It's helpful for me. But when it comes to demon spirits, we have to be audible. So that is why we say, say it. Say it loudly. So then we might have to leave the person in a prayer that says, okay, spirit of lust, you do not have any hold over my life. No, Jesus has forgiven me. So you see, what door is shut needs to be announced to the de demon spirit. So then it is like, FYI, you, you no longer have any legal hold over my life. I'm already forgiven. Jesus has forgiven me. The stronghold is broken. So... There is no place for you, spirit of lust, spirit of confusion, spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety, whatever it is. So you you deal with those spirits. You renounce. Sometimes what happens that um, there are many spirits. Okay, there are many spirits that kind of take over a person. So um, then that renunciation process itself might take a while, where you are you are addressing you know, every this sin, that sin, uh, this spirit, that spirit. But take them through. Take them through so that in the name of Jesus, they have declared to every demon spirit that you no longer have hold over my life. That stronghold is broken. That sin is forgiven. Okay, uh, And, uh, you know, that way the, the person is free. Also, uh, we can renounce any pacts. Okay, I don't know if you all have heard, but recently, um, you know, I, I heard that people make pacts. They make deem with uh, demon spirits they even have deal with satan like you know they sell themselves to the devil and so basically what they're saying is uh you know we, we said right empower stage of empowerment so their existence their body is now a vessel which satan can use for his purposes Nulta, uh, or sorry as an indian word it basically is like upside down uh we want the Holy Spirit to take over. That's what. That's why we were created. We were created for that, to be filled with the Spirit of God, to live for the purposes of God. But what is the, the complete opposite of that? Being an enemy of God. Unfortunately, there are people who make deals like that with the devil. So, uh, I've also heard of testimonies and deliverances where... Mm, uh, I've seen where you know, people come and um, 
you know they say things like uh, i i uh, made this deal or i i committed myself or i committed my it could be a gift or talent of theirs you know my singing my songwriting ability uh, to uh, demon spirits um, so that i can make more money uh, things like that so the person might actually be able to tell you that this is what i have done then um, we have to break it so in renou- renouncing such pacts uh, we would also need to the person would also need to tell that i break this commitment in the name of jesus you know in the name of jesus i renounce uh, these spirits i break this commitment i no longer like you have to spell it out i no longer belong to the devil i belong to the lord jesus christ the lord jesus christ has lordship over my body my mind my will my emotions my spirit like they have to spell it all out you see because uh, what's happening we are we you know it's like contract legal we we sign documents and that is agreement done now it is signed now it's done. so it's like saying this agreement is stone so based on what do you want to enter into my life the agreement is now gone so when such a thing happens uh then we go ahead and call out the spirit to come out command the spirit to come out and the spirit comes out and not only that in in the first care of this person the person uh, will you know be free uh, the person will be um we have the opportunity to grow in god so it's a positive way forward for the individual and that is why these things have to be dealt with um so you know we might encounter all kinds of all kinds of people or why did this person get uh, demonized there are many many reasons and in today's world um, as i just mentioned there are people who are willfully committed uh themselves to demon spirits as well but don't get scared about anything you know point remember we said point 1 we have to build faith in the person uh and now when the person starts sharing all these things with us in fact uh, when i was you know a young believer but maybe yeah i mean a little bit you know a strong in the lord a very good friend of mine uh, gave me a book Okay. and this book was all about deliverance it was all about uh, um you know god's power that delivers people but but it had descriptions after descriptions of you know occultic practices like in detail it had occultic practices it had how demons manifest and what demons do so if you take the percentage of how much it talks about god i i would i could say that i i just scanned through and i i understood maybe 5% about god 95% about demons okay and i don't my friend i said i'm sorry i thank you you know your intention is good uh, and uh, you know i'm grateful that you want me to know these things Mm. and it is about jesus but let me tell you this book is not building faith this book is building fear in people's lives and that is not ministry right so uh, never never let the devil intimidate you um and don't let people get intimidated whether it is the person that we are ministering to or the people around never make it look like oh really you made a pact with the devil and you wrote songs which song did you write you know <laughs> like which song did you record there is no need for all that because what's happening is you are making the devil look so mighty uh, that even the faith that you have to cast out the demon you're kind of playing with it so there is no need for all that yeah okay you made a pact with the devil fine you want to reject that you want to break it come let's break it. okay so uh make it all about god make it all about the cross make it all about the victory of our lord jesus christ so then what happens you know we are filled with faith and uh, the person is filled with faith the people around who are praying they're all filled with faith 
uh, whatever devil this is sometimes these demons you in from the interview will come to know this devil has oppressed uh, 3000 people this devil has done all how does it matter jesus has won victory over every demonic force every demonic spirit on the cross 2000 years ago it's a it's an old story so uh, yeah okay you know it's not impressive the bio data of the devil is not impressive for us we only get an idea of what he has been doing and how we should deal with him so great well and good we are just going to deal with so um while doing all this interview thing and taking the person through uh, and you might find out many things um you don't go into unnecessary details it's not needed it's not needed for you or the person um and uh, yeah just limit always remember we must keep faith high that's the point so if the anything is taking us away from it those details are not required okay. so just move forward okay you get to know there is this 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 some strong demon okay no problem come on let's pray renounce it you renounce it if you renounce it even that strong demon has to leave because it's an act of your will or the person's will okay so that's how it is now moving to point number 8 now that you have dealt with the open doors uh we cast out the unclean spirit or spirits okay so why cast out at step 8 why not at step 1 anybody i know i've been repeating these things but i just want to hear from you why not cast out at step 1 and uh, at step 8 Okay, who would like to uh, just share your views? Okay, I think I'll ask uh, people who are in our time zone because others are joining so early. Uh, how about uh, Zeli? Sally are you on the call can you hear me can you answer the question why do we want to cast out the demon now and not at step 1 sure if Sally can hear me Okay, class. Uh, I would need at least one person to answer, so I can move forward. No, I'm saying uh, these ten steps isn't it, Lubega? Why did we go through such a long process before commanding the demon spirit to come out? Why not in the beginning? That is my question. hello yes yes I yes thank you as you said you needed to make a dis distinction between the individual and the and the demon so you was fast to take someone through a process before you 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 you, you begin commanding let the person also know let him co a person confess let the person accept and then later on you you begin commanding so it's a, that process has to be there how does it help that is what i think yeah thank you thank you paul how does it help uh, you know in that person's life paul later after your deliverance yeah it it it, it helps a person to you know psych psych psychologically possible recover mm. and help him or her to 
to, to confess Jesus as a Lord and a prayer and a Savior, and then also for the Holy Spirit now to come and indwell in that person. That person should now understand. Because if you just rush and begin at step one, as you mm. say, uh, when a demon goes out of a person, he goes back and come back with seven more demons more stronger than this one. And then you find yeah. the state of the person is more worse than the, the, the state in which he was before. So that's why it has to go through all these steps. Yes, yes. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for, uh, um, you know, summarizing whatever we have learned so far. That's right. So, you know, we, we want to make sure uh, that we have closed all doors. In other words, the legal rights, the legal rights which the demon spirits have, uh, those are removed. And at that point, when we cast out the unclean spirit or spirits, you know, they come out and if they want re-entry, door is closed. They cannot go back. The legal right is uh, broken. Now the Holy Spirit fills the house. So, you know, there's no way of getting back into that house. So, remember we said Pablo Botari model, quiet and effective. So, quiet, quick, effective. So this is effective. So whatever work we have done so far till uh, step eight is useful for us. Okay. Now, uh, coming back. We have evicted. Okay. We have cast out one spirit. But then, you know, we might have to check whether there are more spirits. Generally, in the case of demonization, we find that there is more than one spirit. Okay. So uh, then again, we might have to go back, interview a little bit. So step six, step seven, little more, you know, repetition is required till, uh, uh, till such a time where we are very clear. All the spirits have left the person and the person is now free. Now uh, move on to the next step which is nine, we lead, now that the person is free, we can lead them in praising and thanking God for what God has done in their life. Okay, So that is uh, leading them into worshipping God. Okay, Because now they, and, and usually I don't, uh, I, I think uh, this also happens on its own in some ways because you know, somebody who has been so oppressed by uh, let's say a spirit of anxiety when they are set free they they realize the freedom which they were missing so then what happens you might find that person crying you might find that person just looking happy finally uh, and you know saying thank you god thank you so it also happens automatically but then you know we too can join in and we too can say oh wow look what the lord has done and we can all praise god together we can uh, give thanksgiving unto the lord together especially that individual who has been set free okay um yeah then next is that we have the individual pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So if uh, you're done with the deliverance session, then, you know, generally we take time. I remember one particular lady, uh, she was manifesting and, uh, you know, after the spirit was cast out, uh, she was so exhausted and just sitting there. But somebody from the team went and uh, um, said, she's a believer. She's set free went and asked her, okay, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? And she said, no, I'm not. Um, so she, in that situation, in that condition itself, uh, this uh, lady asked her, would you like to be? And uh, the lady, this uh, person who was set free said, yes. So they prayed together and, you know, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we lead them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Reason is the house now should not be empty. Remember what these spirits are going to do? So let's say five spirits left. They will go. They will try to come back. One is the entry points are shut. Second is the house is filled now. It's not, it's occupied. And so there is no way for the demon spirit to come back. So in this manner, what has happened is it's an effective deliverance ministry. 
where we we have you know done the best effort that we know of uh, this person can continue to walk free before the lord and then after that comes the post ministry suggestions so it's not over it's not yet over the person is free now then you know, we might have to talk to them sometimes uh, one chat after deliverance uh, might not be sufficient okay because we've understood uh, that person said that oh i had this habit of uh, mm, uh, you know watching Uh, pornography or something for so many years uh, i never thought it was wrong and the demon spirits came in through that okay now now that the person is set free we might have to work with them and uh, just talk to them and see hey how did that lifestyle start uh, what is what is your what is um, you know what do you know about the truth of god's word so the renewing of that person's mind is very very important so we can talk to them about all these things show them uh, what the word of god says and as they renew their minds as they consecrate themselves to god in that area you know they they might uh, like job prayed and he said like you know i have made a covenant with my eye that i will not look with lust uh, upon a woman so uh, you see i'm sharing god's word enlightening the person in that particular area so they are able to uh, break free from their you know uh, untruth or lies that the enemy has planted in their minds so the renewal of the mind takes place and uh, also you know the person can be led into prayer of repentance uh, a prayer that says okay lord i am set apart for you now fill me with the holy spirit my eyes are yours mm, i i choose to live for jesus so all that okay and then don't just leave it at that we can continue to mm, encourage them to let's say they are not plugged into a church and encourage them be plugged into a good bible believing church attend regularly serve in the church learn the word so you see you need a lifestyle you need a freedom lifestyle because other than that people might have the chance to slip back into their old ways but when there is a change in lifestyle those demons no longer have an opportunity to come back so now when the person is connected to a good church filled with the holy spirit reads the bible you know regularly prays regularly also we might say uh, why don't you plug into uh, a group an accountability group maybe something like a life group where somebody can keep a tab uh, on us uh, and and say okay brother you know how have you been and i can be honest with them and say i'm okay but you know i'm still struggling in this area maybe they'll they'll stand with us they will help us so accountability groups is also very helpful um, post deliverance and uh, yeah yeah i think other other points are covered elaborately um you know many times so i just don't want to be very repetitive uh yeah also we could um, help the person identify uh, you know if at all there are, are are some demon spirits afflicting them you know we also can do self deliverance isn't it so i can take authority let's say fear is coming in and i sense that it's not a normal fear it's more demonic then i can take authority for myself so then teach the person about believers authority help them to take authority over demonic spirits we can also encourage them to pray in tongues praying in the spirit is very powerful so that will also keep them out of further attacks yeah uh maybe the holy spirit might uh, reveal some instructions you know uh, through the gifts of the spirit so even that can be told to the person okay so yeah i think we have covered everything we can especially when it comes to addictive behavior personal bondages um you know uh, we can minister deliverance but we need to provide good post 
you know deliverance care to the person only then there will be a change in their lifestyle okay and then they can continue to live free walk free with god so with that we have completed all the 10 steps of the model and what we will do is the next one which is about exercising authority over territories and regions uh, we have uh, i think only two more chapters yeah two more chapters left yes so we will take this up in the next class we will stop right here mm. so if there are any any inputs from your side we can discuss about it we will pray and close has anyone here like um seen or been a part of a deliverance session which uh, has a process okay uh doesn't look like Uh, okay not a problem not a problem now that we have learned uh, i'm sure we can put uh, our knowledge to good use uh, let's go ahead and close today's class then i would like to request somebody who's comfortable to lead in prayer so i leave it open anyone can pray please Okay uh, I'm not too sure like you know who who has a mic and who's comfortable so that's why I don't want to call out names uh who, anyone can you please volunteer Let's pray Okay uh either of you Father in heaven we thank you for today and for the lessons that we've had this morning lord lord we know that we are your children we should keep learning lord right now we've learned about how the processes through how we can pray for a demon possessed person so lord let this stick into our mind and we call upon the holy spirit to keep on reminding us in case we meet this scenario in our lives and church and in everybody in every situation around us lord let us be fruitful and multiply as we put what we've learned into practice we also pray that we meet in sound mind in the next lecture next friday lord we do bless the pastor we also pray for everybody who is in class to have peace and to have a wonderful weekend i do pray in the name of the father the son the holy spirit and we say amen 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 thank you thank you so much lubega that's wonderful uh, so yes class we uh, wrap up for today god bless you have a great weekend and meet you next uh, friday god bless thank you man Thank you thank you brother